Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT, and this is part of our automation series. We're going to be looking at how potentially to fix some of the little niggly things we find. So one of the niggly things we found was True Strike. True Strike not working the way we want it to. So uh, let me just demonstrate this in case you've not seen that video and you've jumped straight to this, which obviously is fine. Uh, let's put these two people in combat. And make sure we've got a uh, a realistic scenario going on here. Roll their initiative, lovely jubbly. Uh, begin that combat. Fortunately, Sorryman's going first. So, Sorryman is going to cast True Strike. Okay, so he's going to cast that on himself. Brilliant, lovely jubbly. He's used his action, he's concentrating on it, and he's got True Strike. So, it's now the bugbear's go. Bugbear does whatever the bugbear does. And now it goes back to Sorryman's turn where he's going to use that true strike to get advantage, except it's gone. <laughs> and this is the problem that we had was the actual function of true strike, giving the advantage that we, it should do, works fine. That's not the issue. The issue is the fact that you cast it using an act, your action one round and it should last until the end of your next round or until you've used it. But it's not doing that. It's timing out too fast. So this is one of the things that uh, we want to get it working properly. So that's what this video is about. How do we fix that? Um, and I had a little play and I just wanted to show you what that process was. So there's a couple of things that are causing, potentially causing the problem. Now one of them is this duration. So I just right clicked and edit. This duration is one round. So if I cast it this round, next round it says, well, you've had your one round, it goes. So this default is not what we want. That's not helping us. Um, so I can change this, of course, to um, whatever I need it to be. I'm actually going to change it to permanent. Now, obviously, that's not what the spell's supposed to do. But bear with me. I'm going to change it to permanent. So once he's cast it, that's going to stay forever. We're going to use something else to actually switch it off at the correct time rather than it timing out because of one round. Brilliant, let's go to the, uh, so if this is nothing to do with the MIDI QOL tab, this is on the effects tab, and we want to edit this effect here. Now bearing in mind, we've got all of our automation stuff in which gives us access to this. So what we wanna do is click on this duration tab. Now in here, it also says one round. Well. Again, that is also going to trigger it to end early. So let's change that to two rounds. Yes, that's not rules as written. But what we... <laughs> so we're ignoring that basically we're overriding those two boxes to say, hey, this spell is just going to last forever, way beyond when it's supposed to. We want to use special duration to control when this actually ends. So if we click on this, we get a drop down box and there's loads of options here. What we want is turn end expires at the end of the source actors next turn that is when it should end and I had a little play with that before and it was still just dropping it out because the effect duration was only one round and on that front page it was saying it only lasts one round so now regardless of the fact that it's a permanent effect or that it should last two rounds this will override that and say, hang on a minute, this is the earliest opportunity, it will end then. But also, it only works for the next attack, not the entire of the next round. So, special duration, we're going to add another one of those. And there's lots of options in here. And one of them is, expires on the next item use, which is of the activation type action. So next time we take an action, attack action, it is going to end. So let's submit those changes. We can close that and let's try this again. So we're still on Sorryman's turn. Uh, we've got himself selected. We're casting our true strike. We've got it. And if we move to the bugbear's turn, it stays. We're back to Sorryman's turn again. We've still got it. So it hasn't disappeared. But if he doesn't use it this turn, it ends before the bugbear's turn. So that's exactly what we want. That's the trigger we've just changed. But of course, let's put it back to Sorryman's turn. Okay, we also want it to end if he uses that ability. So Sorryman's actually sixth level, so he gets two attacks per turn. But 
True Strike should only work for the first one. So let's make that first quarter staff strike. Uh, I don't want to automatically use Reckless. Brilliant. So we got our advantage. 2d20 keep highest. So we know that's advantage. And it's ended True Strike effect on him. So his second attack that he gets, 1d20, it's normal. No advantage. So we fixed that one. That is now working perfectly for us, exactly as it should do, rules as written. So it just gives you an idea of where you might find, if you encounter little things that aren't quite working, the things you might want to look at, especially around the durations of spells that don't end exactly after one round, um, and they continue on. So I discovered this because I'm working through... Let me end that encounter. I'm working through all of... Um, my character's ability, so sorry, man. I started with, and I'm creating a compendium here of called uh, just called CG GM Tested. Um, so once I've checked his barbarian traits are doing what they should, you just saw reckless attack pop up, regardless of whether they are from Chris's or Gambit's, or whatever. Once I know that they're working. I'm dumping them over here into my folder. I've got the Hooded Lantern there, and I've got these spells, including True Strike, which I fixed. So I'm dumping these all into my own compendium. Now, the reason why this is called GM Tested is because they are working perfectly when I'm logged in as the Game Master. Now, bolt, belt and braces to make sure that everything does work smoothly. Once I've finished this process with these with, with my player characters because those are the ones I want to make sure work um, so I'm going to go through all of my player characters um, once I'm happy that all of those things work and I've got this I'm then going to log in as the player and get the player to use them as well now in theory if they work logged in as the GM there should be no issues logged in as the player but I do just want to double check that that is the case and as they complete um, that uh, pass, if you like, to make sure I'm happy with that, I'm going to then drop them into this CG automated items, which I've created this compendium as part of a module. So that is going to give me these items in my own compendium module, which means any of my game worlds, I can just go, oh, click to add CG automated items module, and then I will have access to my compendium of things that I have tried and tested and I'm happy with. Bosh, lovely jubbly, off I rock and roll. And of course, I potentially can share that with you as well, even though it's replicating, you know, so the hooded lantern. That's just gambits and it just works. All right? I didn't need to do anything with that apart from just check it worked. And it does. So I can just chuck that straight in there. And of course, in my other game, I could just pull it out. But here... If I, you know, if I do, we've done this before, if I do Spotlight Om Omni Search, uh, <laughs> if I can type, uh, and I do something like Lantern, I've got so many, uh, even those, you know, that same looking Lantern, a covered Hooded Lantern, um, the DDB one, my tested one, GPS one, um, look at all these ones. It's, there's so many different ones from different places. It's like, I know if I just drag it straight from this folder, I can do it on the fly in game. Oh, I'm just going to pop into the shop and buy a lantern. Great. Rather than kind of, have I got the right one? Do I need to use medkit? It's like, no, this one already works. I can just chuck it straight in. So it's just going to shortcut things, make my, my experience as a DM much smoother because it's ready to rock and roll and it's tested. So anyway, just a little quick, quick, short one wanted to show you. We have fixed True Strike. Obviously, you can just copy what I did to fix your own True Strike if you're having issues with it as well. Um, and uh, any of these others that I encounter that we needed to do little fixes on uh, that are potentially a little bit complicated, a little bit tricky, I will let you know how that goes. Just a quick one. Thanks, guys. Take care.